Recording in progress. Okay, we, we were in the green room and we started off on a topic and we're just getting into some information that was really resonated with me, first of all. Uh, and it's information that other people are going to want to hear. Plus, we want to listen to it again after this. So, Justin, um, kind of go back and pick up on where we were starting to talk about. And I'm going to say the words out loud now because it's no secret. We're, we've been talking about Golden Taya and the allotments and what that really means and how we're all here because it absolutely resonates with us. And now our job is to communicate to the rest. But when it had first come out, Justin had seen it and triggered him just like I would. Okay, let's go down that rabbit hole before you know you really reach out. Um, so I want you to pick it up from there, Justin, and kind of lead us back to where you're going because I really want other people to hear how you resonated with it yourself. Sure. So I had never heard of the Golden Taya. Never heard of it, um, but part of my, you know, awakenings or experience, I'll just say personal experiences, right? Um, led me down different paths. And, and of course, you know, um, it wasn't by chance that your story resonated with me because it was very similar. I've had similar, you know, I, I would say, kind of grand, what, what one could say it would be grandiose experiences, right? One of them being in 2019, where um, I had seen, well, the stars form a circle around my head. Okay, so it, kind of how it all began. And, and three of these stars descended upon the, the, the property that I was living, okay? And zipped around and I still can't piece together what exactly because like there were beings of light. Anyhow, this is this is just a start. It triggered my that that particular experience triggered a, 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 an awakening. Okay, and then I began having I began seeing. Well, we, we discussed this uh, uh, in a previous interview. Um, the ether, right? And some of the things that were shown to, okay, in my 3D perspective, I'm seeing through my two eyes what appears to me in the ether as beings that associated with uh, ancient Egyptian, you know, um, I, 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 deities, right? So I, I had seen, um, and it was really, really profound at the time because I'm uh, as I'm looking up in the clouds I'm seeing it was almost like a a, a, a a reflection of water okay and I'm seeing a shadow it's not even it's not the shadow it was almost like I'm seeing the being but the 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 reflection that I'm seeing is the shadow being cast by the ether right so that's my perception and for a while, man, I was taking all these different pictures because I'm seeing it. I'm feeling the energy. I'm capturing some of the photos, but I didn't know really at the time what was happening. Okay. I just knew that something was special that was going on. Okay. So, so this, this kept occurring and kept building for several, uh, several weeks. Um, and and then one day in particular, I, I I felt this urge to stay up with the beings, and it was interesting because I watched them come sunrise, march into the sun. Right, they marched into the sun, <clears throat> and so of course. I've tried to be, uh, tried to explain what I was seeing to other individuals that were close to me at the time. They had no understanding, no relation as to what I was speaking of, 
right? Because it was my own personal experience. This is what I'm seeing. They can't see it. This is what I'm seeing. And so it, you know, I, I, I couldn't wrap my head around seeing these beings walk into the sun. Okay. But I saw it at least here. Uh, it, it, what I thought was, in, you know, in, in the physical. Now, during that time, I have to say, admit to that I, I believe I've had a, maybe a spontaneous um, kundalini activation and would I open up, you know, right around that time uh, because I was connecting with uh, um, the energies around me differently than I had ever connected before. Um, so, so, you know, and I, and I'll, and I'll say this, that's a very, um, if you're not prepared for it, whoa, hold on to your seat. That's what I can tell you because it could, it's, it's so powerful in the sense that you, one, my, my, like my own personal, uh, senses heightened through the roof. Um, and that includes things you know senses that i wasn't really uh, prepared you know pre prepared and or, and or equipped right to to handle mm -hmm. so intense you're I, I was um you know being being an empath um i had i already have strong feelings you know i feel others feelings but then it was heightened my um telepathic communications or you know some would say psychic communications were heightened as well I, and i had no idea what was going on i was just feeling it and hearing it and seeing it and well anyhow but i went through a period of time where you know all these experience i i, I had photographic you know what i mean documentation i had a timeline i had it i had a um, understanding that all these things were happening, but I was missing one key component, which was why the Golden Taya allotments resonated so much with me, right? Is because in the first video that I watched, uh, it was about the Solarians. It, act it describes exactly what I had just experienced. Mm -hmm. Like, to, yeah, they come through through the sun portal. And I was just like, I was, it was my aha, like, like, like aha moment. And then to also come to find out that um, they use shungite. They use shungite and bees and the scarab right At, you know all in association with healing and water and frequency you know so it was just it resonated so much with already stuff that like inner gnosis and stuff that i'm practicing right so but but i didn't i had no idea like literally no idea until i heard that that first video i mean it just it was a it was a well, it was a very emotional, okay? It was an emotional trigger in a positive, in a positive manner because it, 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 um, I, not, not that anyone needs validation, but it certainly, it certainly brought comfort to me to know that, um, here it is documented by you know a higher perspective right Ch you know, ch channel through uh someone who has a deep understanding and it 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 really brought like i said validation and comfort to uh and 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 put the words of how to explain what was going what, what i was what i was processing and going through you know um it was already written and that's and so so then that that um that information allowed for me to understand some other components to uh, that have been brought into my awareness, right? Such as the, such as the, um, 
grid work that that um uh, and the and the and the sacred points of the of the earth and um what you know the connection between the clearing work that's being done currently and the work that's going to be done in the near future you know it just kind of it 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 it's, it it resonates so highly and it makes so much sense and i'm so um yeah i I'm, I'm elated that that you're you're actually delivering this message as well well you know what i mean because it 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 yeah it's um it's important and it needs to get out there yeah it was no accident that it crossed my path when it did out of all the archive of information that Maya has accumulated since the mid seventies, why was my attention drawn to this one in particular? Uh, and then to hear others resonate in the same way, almost like an un, it's not quite understandable why it resonates, but you know that it just does. Like well, everything else that's come along, you just gotta let it go. Yeah, it's it's unsolicited. You're not you're not out there pounding it. You know, yes. so you know it came across. I heard it, didn't know what it was. I, mm -hmm. um, you know, kind of just sometimes. You know how it is. Sometimes you get in that little flow, and stuff starts. It, it's like magically appears on your web browser and or um, yeah you know, in algorithms. And yeah, and it just, it, it connected. So um, very, very powerful, very, very, very powerful information. And um, the connections I'm putting, you know, that I'm, I'm, be, I'm beginning to put together that I you know, lost some memory, I guess lost, like um, now that I, I now I'm, I'm remembering certain aspects that were once forgotten that's that's how i can that's how i can um describe it and the, those yeah those particular teachings um it well it's, it's just more it's more um data more information you know it's more information that one can actually base their understanding on and if it resonates, fantastic. If it doesn't, that's not for them, you know. Mm -hmm. And that's how I got it. Um, but but as I said, I'm, I'm I was it was really encouraging to to hear the um, the messages. Oh, wow, powerful. Good. Well, you found it when you were supposed to find it. <laughs> um, I, I was delighted to hear that it resonated with you the same way it did with me. Hold on just a second. <laughs> now I can hear you. <laughs> um, yeah, and so we're in the beginning stages of unpacking all of this. I mean, I've had this for maybe six weeks now, I think, when I look back at it and how many times I've repeatedly looked at it and I'm not finished digesting it a bit, but, I already, I've got an elevated view of things and a perspective that this gave me some clarity on ascension. I thought I really understood what it was and my intuition was already telling me that vibrationally it's close and all these tools are being provided for us, uh, for ourselves first, get your alignment right, and then we'll be in a position to help others understand the things that we didn't understand that we're coming into uh, clarity with. And, you know, you, everything that we can validate as a human being is just another touchstone that we get back to go back and, okay, I have to build a foundation and knowledge that makes sense and is reasonable to me. I love when Paul is here because she and I talk about how we got to these conclusions by reason. Not that we just believed it because we heard it. No, no, something really resonated with me. And that's why I believe it with all my being. And once I do, now I get another layer of information the universe sends me that might sound remarkable, but holy cow, 
I knew the truth of that before that, and this is this the next logical step. So now that we have really the I's dotted and the T's crossed on what ascension is really going to happen, what effect it has on the, the planetary surface, um, we just need to continue to, to ingest it in a way that we understand it. And we have to do that first because we all need to assimilate it in our own way and in the time that it takes. And man, I'm still the Capricorn that's deep diving into the things I deep dove before. So I really understand it. That way we can figure out how we need to put it in terms others will understand, knowing that they each need to get it in their own way too. Yeah. Thoughts, Paula? <laughs> Yeah, I really loved what you had said about um, you had the experience first, right? It's like, what's going on? I see these beings walking into the sun and you're just like having to just accept it. And it's like, okay, I see it. I don't know the logic behind it, but this has happened and this has been profound for me. And then I love how the evidence backing it up shows up afterwards, like in a written document, it's been around for a long time. And you're like, oh, this is confirmation that this is for me. This is about me. And here's the bigger picture with it. And it's interesting how spirit does it like that. But it's because I think it's so outside of our paradigm that unless they, they're almost very calculating how they deliver so that you'll accept it in the divine right timing, right? Mm -hmm. And so that's what I've been finding for myself too, is I'd gotten messages about Talos uh, psychically. I'm also, um, I'm a medium and an, an intuitive. So I'd gotten messages about Talos and then found Diane Robbins book, but you know, I'm still just saying to myself, wow, this is so outside of my paradigm. I just, you know, I'm, I, it feels right. It, like you said, I'm triggering memories. Memories are triggered. But then it wasn't until, it's just, you know, spirit just knows how I am. I like a lot of evidence. And so then Lowell shows up on Gaia. And I'm like, no way. <laughs> like now I can, now I can say, okay, I'm not, it's not just me alone in this. Cause I've never heard of anybody. I hear about people talking about Arcturians and Palladians and all this other stuff, but I'd never heard of Talos and never, it just was not in my field of vision, but I knew the Ascension was coming. And so then these, um, the, these allotments, are putting that together with some material that I found a while ago that was hard for me to believe. And these two are kind of lining up for me. So I'm like, okay, this is confirmation. And it is a lot for me to digest, to be honest with you, the deeper stuff. Yeah. yeah. May I, yes. which material, which material that I had gotten a book by um, De Maximilian. I, I'd have to get the book. Uh, it had something about the when, um, now when I say this, it's, I don't resonate with all the material. Uh, it, what is it? Something when um, the ascension happens in 2022 is what he said. Now, when I hear that, I'm always like, I take it with, um, you know, I don't really, I don't really like come to terms. Oh, okay. This is going to happen in 2022. But some of the things that he was describing in there, how it's going to play out is exactly the same way that it talks about in the allotments, like exactly. And mm -hmm. so I didn't really believe it until I saw it here too. That means there's two minds pulling it from this, the one mind, right? Yeah. That's the trouble with absolutes. When somebody gives me a date, look, it, it diminishes what, all the other things that resonate with me. Yeah. So, you know, I know how, now I know perfectly now how things play out. I've experienced it now for a couple of years with connections to higher dimensions. And I understand how that works. And 
you just need to let the universe show it to you in the layers that it needs to yeah, because there's a lot of things that have to line up yeah, exactly you know something as it needs to that's all that right. happens as it needs to in however moment, moment. I, I was going to say that something that is in alignment with what lowell you know had mentioned about the next how the next pivotal years to come or the next years to come are kind of pivotal you know we don't have a, an exact timeline however part of my deep dives and looking at the golden allotments and all of it i started looking at the different yugas okay and in relation because it's basically it's just a calendar right it's a cycle of time mm -hmm. and and when they when one one ends and another one begins and i've had some very very profound awakenings when it comes to time right and so um someone that i come that brought, was brought into my awareness and i know i I'm, I'm sure lowell knows you know of the individual um michael lee hill anyhow he he <sighs> He has an understanding of 432 hertz base frequency, okay? And 432 is a very, very powerful number in terms of mathematics, Fibonacci sequence. Um, there's all kind, you know, there's all kinds of, 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 um, of math, quantum math that, that, um, Kind of verifies his 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 findings, right? And when 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 you started when he started looking at the Mayan calendar and the a, the end of the age, um, everybody had predicted it was like in two thousand twelve, right? Okay. Yeah. The calendar, the 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 you know, because deep over over time because of the Gregorian calendars and different calendars introduced. The, the dates kind of get, you know, get met, but so you have to go back, to, you have to go way back and see when they start you know, calculating. Then they started getting the procession of, of the equinox and make up for the procession. That, so I looked at his work and then recently I came across another gentleman's information that went into another form of yuga cycles, but verified some, some type of like, as far as dates go, that 2023 and 2024 are pivotal dates in terms of the cycle ending and starting again. So it 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 kind of just also reaffirmed some of that, like the the I don't want to say urgency, but synchronicity and timelines. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. You know, and it and it came. For me, in terms of it's just diving, you know, I just dive, dive, see if it makes sense. If it resonates, great. If not, you know, chuck it. That's that's kind of my, and it was in it for me. I saw alignments, you know. Um, that's how that kind of how it works for me. Just mm -hmm. I, I see it, if it resonates, I'll do a deep dive. And um, so, I because it. Be, because of that's now in my awareness and based upon my own personal experiences and I, you know, just, uh, um, uh, am on a healing journey, so to speak. And I just recovered, or I'm recovering from a, from a, uh, NDE and, um, knowing all of this, I've been, I've been, you know, something kind of amazing has happened because, uh, at the right time, it's with this knowledge and what's occurred and, and how it occurred, I've been afforded an opportunity to, to actually go and spend a little bit of time um, over near the gateways of Lemuria, you know? Um, and, and so, I, so this week I'm gonna be heading out and, and, and um, seeing what happens down in Kauai. Yeah. Wow. Nice. Yes. Yeah. So, so, 
um, I don't know, you know, for, for, for me, it's a, it's an opportunity to go to a sacred spot that I know has significant connections to, um, you know, I, 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 I want to say home, right? Mm -hmm. However, yeah. you know, um, yeah. So, but, but it's, it's more in the sense that I'm hoping that, a pro, you know, it's divine timing and um, resonation and, it, and, and that, that, that the, the, the time that I spend there will also help you know, help bring about some of the rejuvenation that I'm seeking. Right. Um, yeah. So anyhow, it's just, it's, it's interesting how it all coincides, the synchronicities. Do you feel like you're being called there? Like it's home and you're like being called. Well, I, I've, I've had, I love the Hawaiian islands. I've never spent any time on Kauai. Um, something that I don't really put out there. Um, I, I, back in 2011 on Oahu, I, I actually had encounters with mermaid. Mer yeah. Mer yeah. Yeah. I sat on one. It, it, wow. Yeah. I didn't know it, it was, it, it, it was a, in, in, it looked like a log. Um, but the log moved, you know, bounced, kind of bounced me off. And at the time, I, it, I was such in shock that I couldn't believe what was happening. And um, so anyhow, you, you asked me whether I could, you know, feel drawn to that area. Yes, yeah. I have, a, I have, a, I have a, a connection, but I've never been to Kauai and I'm looking to, to um, have a similar, you know, Maybe a yeah. little bit, interesting, you know what I mean? Yeah, a big interaction. Wow. Somebody here in the tribe, I'm sure you heard her. I'm trying to remember her name. Um, Lisa, Lisa Woodward. <clears throat> she was the one whose story that she was in, I want to say she was in Missouri. And within nine months, she had her in her mind that she was going to Kauai and boom, that's where she is now. Yeah. And she's drawn to get out like in the whole, water. Her whole family, her. right? Her exactly. whole like, kids and a husband. It wasn't just like her alone, right? Yeah. It seemed like they all resonate with that type of vibration. So it made it easier in the end. But whatever collective energy had to come together to you leave a state in the middle of the United States and move and find a place in Kauai. And how does that even happen? She did it. So I, I just mentioned that because you mentioned Kauai as a maybe the two of you um, could connect. That'd be awesome. Yeah. That, no, I look forward to it. I don't know what I honestly, I don't know what to uh, expect. You know what I mean? I, I have no idea. But and I don't plan on uh, I, my, my intention isn't to move there. You know, it's a it's kind of a, a, a launching point in in maybe the next couple of years, what, of, what I plan on doing, you know, there might be more, you know, I was actually, I've been encouraged to, well, the words were used when you get around ley lines. Wow. I don't know what that means. Right. But it means something. It has some significance, especially when you start getting into the grid work that's being done. Um, so, and, once again, I'm piecing this stuff together because it was mentioned to me, you know, um, at different points in my timeline, you know, um, sit kind of since my awakening. But <clears throat> I've had um, just little breadcrumbs. I mean, that's how it is. Little breadcrumbs dropped in front of me. And if it feels right, I do it. And if it doesn't feel right, you know, I'll know because I'll, there's a lesson behind it, you know, a lesson that I have to learn. Um, so this, the, 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 it feels right. It feels like I should go visit. And um, 
yeah, I, I, I believe that there's a reason for it. I think well, be... you were called there clearly, yeah. and now you're acting on that. And when you say the words ley line and grid work, to me, now you're really starting to embrace the energetic side of yourself because you're explaining yourself. I don't know that I'm moving there, but yeah, there's something it sounds like I need to explore there. And so, yes, little energetic being, you, you're going to connect to some ley lines there because clearly your guides indicated that you have the ability to influence that in some way. So when you go there, again, you're connected. That whole description you gave of your kundalini kicking in once and for all, and now you really connecting and experiencing higher dimensional things, um, that's what you're going to get to do wherever you go now. So you're guided to go there for a reason. It'll be cool to find out what that is when you finally get there. I love to see people resonate with the energetic side of themselves. You talk about when this really, when your DNA cracks open and your senses get so acute that you can't ignore the things that are beyond your capacities you had before. And yet here it is. And then when you embrace the things that you just feel and witness that way, now you understand what being a light body is all about. And you're practicing for the day that you're going to make that transition permanently because it's happening to all of us. You, uh, we little empath feelers, we can feel that starting to happen. And the more we get, we hear that things are changing at a DNA level, I mean, I feel it. I watch the sun to see what's coming at us next because now I feel it. If I'm not paying attention and I feel the phenomenon, well, then I can go check and pretty sure we're sitting in the middle of a stream coming from a coronal hole that's pointed at us or there was an M-class flare like peeled off yesterday, not quite in our direction, but enough to give us a little bit of a jolt. Man, I feel that stuff now, but it took me a while to develop an awareness of it in the first place. And then when you start to line up when that happens and how I feel, that takes some time. But I'm telling you, whatever additional light is coming our way, now I can distinguish the difference between this half orionic light we used to live on and this full spectrum stuff that's coming our way. Couldn't agree more. Yeah. So um, now we together we will figure out a way to help others learn the things that we learned, and maybe they won't have to muck around in the dark as long as we did. It's just really resonates with me every time somebody else comes along and it, with reason, Paul. <laughs> When you joined the group and started to articulate the things from a reason standpoint, that's what us logical Capricorns based our due diligence on. Yeah. So if people, I'd like to think that most of them resonate because I sound authentic. That's why I really want to go back and listen yeah. to myself. So when I tell these stories, is it believable? I resonate with that guy. Um, you know, there's just something calming and grounding when I listen to Lowell, when I separate myself, that he didn't make this up. Right. No. And, we, and when the next person comes along that he tells me their version, it's never, oh, that Lowell, I went to tell us the same way you did. We all know that what that was meant for me, not to say that the rest of you don't resonate, you're Lemurians and we're all going too, but that was meant to get my attention that day. Everyone has their own way. And now man, it's just see how quickly this is coming together. Oh my goodness. Yeah. That's always what I look at too. When somebody says something, um, I, I listen um, to what they're saying, but really I look for the, the genuine, the authenticity of them. Cause you can, it's palpable, right? You can tell when somebody is authentic. And um, as I listen to you, Justin, and I listen to you, Lowell, you're, you're authentic, you're genuine, you're from your core. I want to share this because I feel it might be important to you too, you know, 
because we're all probably, I feel like we're all t- the type of people that would just like to enjoy it ourselves and not have to put ourselves out there. <laughs> you know, I just want to, but you know what? I think of how much other people's messages have helped me. And I feel like it's part of my due diligence to share what I experienced so that if somebody feels very alone, the way I felt that they know that somebody that they would be drawn to this, this would be somehow in there, like you said, Oh, how did that just show up out of nowhere? Well, so you could be comforted by it or receive validation of what you're feeling and that kind of thing. And so I want to be cooperative to that, but it is not easy to always throw yourself out there on that. Right. That's no. not easy. Oh, and that's, not. I, I applaud you. I, I mean, you, I, yeah, I applaud both of you because, you know, you have to deal with criticism. You're so brave, first of all. You're so brave to come forward because all the, you know, the criticism, the skepticism, the, the, uh, everything that comes along with sharing something that goes against the grain of what goes against the paradigm. Yeah. Right. And, 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 and I know from, from, you know, a personal perspective, you know, um, the, as you were mentioning earlier, Paula, you know, the, the authenticity resonates. Yeah. I know, I know the heart space. I, I, I could, you know, when you hear someone in their experience and you, the, and the time and the effort and the, the, um, the message that's being delivered when it resonates, you know, you, you just know it's, it's like authentic. Yeah. And so, um, yeah, like I said, I commend, uh, I commend you both for taking a path. And I'm so glad that I found you a, a path less traveled, let's just say, you know, it's, it's a, it's a less traveled and I, I can only, well, I do understand and I can empathize with, um, sometimes the, you know, it's, it's uncomfortable but you're speaking, your truth. <laughs> you're speaking your truth, you know, um, and which, which kind of, you know, because we're, we're, we're in this meeting and, and it is about, um, well, hermetics, you know, um, and it's all connected, you know, all it's, it is all connected. Uh, Paula, I, I have a question for you. So being, being a, a, medium did you did you have a, 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 a i mean you get messages from from spirit uh were, was it easy for you to link and associate the um the energies associated with orion's belt uh um uh, egyptian teachings and Lemurians I mean well no this is this whole uh that aspect of mediumship is is brand new to me so what I what I had done um and now this the mediumship is very brand new too I come from no spiritual background at all very agnostic almost atheist background a, a political science major my kids you know I got two, two kids go to West Point, one to go to MIT. They're engineers, they're cyber. Who taught them to be only scientific? Me, we never went to church. We're like, there's only science. You know, that's my background, very hardcore. You know, engineer, biological engineering and uh, cyber, cyber. That's, <laughs> those are my people. <laughs> And then, um, but I did have an awakening in 2012. In fact, I was a a teacher um, in government. And I remember one of the other teachers asking me, he said, aren't you worried about the Mayan calendar in 2012? So I was going back to the curricula that I'd studied to become a teacher. I'm like, well, no, I don't, you know, there was nothing about ending of the world and that. I had no idea what he was talking about. I'm like, well, why would I be concerned about the Mayans and the calendar? You know, like I had no clue what he was talking about. He's like, he just turned, turned away and walked away. He didn't want to go there with me <laughs> because he thought 
I'm, if I don't even, if I'm that clueless, I, I never knew uh, what he was talking about. In, and I think this was late 2011, right? They thought it was like January 1st or something. I don't know even still today. I don't know. But I had a spiritually transformative experience that blew my mind in April of 2012. And um, where I had an out of body experience, it was spontaneous. Uh, and it was after I had asked myself, I was I was washing the dishes. I always have my spiritually transformative moments when I'm doing laundry or wash, you know, some kind of domestic work. And I remember I was like washing the dishes. I was 20 years in on my marriage. My kids were, you know, doing pretty good. I lived in the suburbs. And I said, I remembered from 2000, uh, 1992 after the Berlin Wall had fallen. And I was excited to be in politics at that time because I thought this is the best time to be in politics. We get to pull money away from the defense department and put it into education and social services. I said, I can't wait to hit the ground running in politics, you know? And then I started working in politics. Uh, I even worked at, I was an intern at the Minnesota State Legislature because I went to the University of Minnesota, St. Uh, Twin Cities campus. So excited to start, you know? And then as I got into it, I'm like, oh my God. We've got more conflicts now than we did during the Cold War. <laughs> and there's more money poured into defense, more than there'd ever probably been during the Cold War. And then, you know, it became this big, um, what is it? The mega military complex started running everything. And I'm like, this is a mess. And um, so I sort of was a campaign manager for like little guys on the local end that I knew couldn't win, but needed a needed somebody there to, you know, represent. Um, and so just did it, you know, part time and then was teaching. And uh, then so by 2012, I was looking over the 20 years. I'm like, oh, my God, we have been in a decline in terms of happiness. And um, the disparity between the rich and poor has grown since 1992. So I was on my 20 year reign of what I intended to do in 1992 and what was happening in 2012. I said, as the GNP, I was very scientific about it. I said, as the GNP has been growing, there's been an exact inverted curve for happiness and quality of life in terms of health, well being you know, kids on opiate drugs on the East Coast. It was insane. I was like, wow, we're on a decline. This is nuts. And I said, well, what's going on? And instead of my scientific mind answering, I went blank. I went blank. And that's when I grew very big. And the earth became very small. And it shifted. And it shifted back. And uh, this voice said, Paula, if you keep doing what you're doing, you are not going to find that pot of gold at the end of the rainbow. And I thought, well, what the hell am I doing? I'm super healthy. I'm raising my kids right. I am doing something wrong. And then after that, even then, I said, well, I must have had a stroke. Like, you know, the expanding and coming back down. I better go to the emergency room. <laughs> That's what I thought. <laughs> but I thought, no, okay, I'm good. I'm breathing. I'm just going to go to bed. Like, and then I woke up the next day to a poem that downloaded. Have you guys, you've gotten downloads. Mm -hmm. The poem downloaded and it was like imprinted on my brain like a computer. I could just write it down like a computer program. Like I didn't have to, but it didn't mean anything to me. So then that's what started me on the path to where I am today. So I, I say all this to say, the reason it's important to tell you this is that I'd never heard of mediums. Um, even, but I had developed myself spiritually first with the hermetic law, Kybalion, quantum physics. I had to go that route first, you know, and then I kind of came into the knowing that, yeah, I think aliens exist. Like they are real, but I didn't really put it together. They had anything to do with me. And then suddenly a voice came. You've had this voice speak to you. Paula, take a mediumship course why I got a job. Like, I don't know why I'd be a medium, but I took the course long story short. I needed it. Um, and then I found out this is what's interesting. I found out I was very good at it. 
And I knew it was because I'd done the soul work first. Mediums that struggle, they're just looking at how to become mediums because they wanted to just connect with spirit without doing the soul work first. I did the soul work first so that beings could come to me without having so much clouded mind stuff, you know? That's why you walked into that role so easy, Paula. It's yeah, just, it, you were was, there. And I had to do it evidentially. Like I have to pull hard evidence. Like I know that your grandfather ate pop tarts every morning, every Sunday morning, and he made you a pop tart. Like it's got to come like that. Otherwise, you know, oh, your grandfather's wears glasses and he's got gray hair, you know, it's like, mm, no, <laughs> you know, none of that. <laughs> Um, so anyway, long story short, I got onto clubhouse cause I love doing public demonstrations like that. And then I got the thought in my mind to call all light workers together because we, everything is declining even more since 2012, it's gotten worse. So over now 30 years, it's gotten worse. Yeah. Not Polarity different. wasn't going to heal itself on its own. Mm -mm. And so I was like, what's going on? So it's been showing me what's going on. Opening a little bit at a time when I'm ready. And then in uh, the summer, I said, let's get all the light workers together. Let's network so that we can really, if we work with somebody that might need Reiki healing, because I don't do Reiki healing, I can connect them with the Reiki healer. Or if somebody has um, somebody who's passed by, um, that needs to connect to the spirit world or their soul, their soul also will connect with me, then they'll bring them to me so that we can not be so divided, you know, like we're all just doing our own thing. We know we've been called to something, but we're not connected. And then that's when spirit came in and it said the Talos people came in. I didn't know that's who they were at first. And they said, well, we showed up too, because we're light workers with you. <laughs> And I said, what? <laughs> Who are you? <laughs> and then they told me that they, they've, um, they lost a lot of light workers that had been born into this, but they didn't wake up or something happened with them. Yeah, those were missed opportunities. That's right. They did not wake up in this incarnation. And did so not. that effort kind of went by the wayside. They did. did you get that information too? That they'd mm -hmm. lost a lot of people. They said, we lost a yeah. lot of people. They had we just looked. They're so mesmerized by this in front of them that their yeah. attention has been taken from them. And they never figured out or what trigger they had for them never yeah. came along to snap them out of it. Something they said, we lost a lot of people. And mm -hmm. then I, uh, so then I got messages of, uh, uh, of you know, that it's coming soon you know, um, and that the, and this is another thing, uh, Sojourner Truth came in, she's a light worker, right? Said the next generation of free, humanity's generation of the first people born free has already been seated. Now, I don't know what that means. Mm -hmm. yeah, Either, yeah. I don't know if that means two years from now, like the planning, like they're planning their life. I don't know. I can just say that. And then as I say that, maybe if somebody else gets evidence, you know, they can let, let me know on that. I haven't been, but soon. And, um, and then the Talos thing came like, Oh, there's Talos. And that was a lot for me to digest. Cause I was just doing souls and people in the spirit world. Um, but, and then I, I had to sit with that, but I had to be courageous because they did ask that I tell people about it. And then as soon as I would tell people about it, I'd have more interactions. So like you were saying, Justin, you have to act first and then they'll give you more. But until you act first, they won't give you more. You have to be courageous. Like you're taking the step to Kauai without a lot of information as to why. You know, you just have to step into it first and then they give you more and then step mm -hmm. into it a and then it's incremental. So, um, yeah, so then that's how the mediumship started, because they they told me and they told me to leave my job. And in truth, the job I was working for was my brother's company. And he 
it, that was the best move I could have made because um, it, it was my brother's company and my brother passed just three mm -hmm. months ago now. The day I started uh, the 12th chapter in my book, my book has 12 chapters because uh, they told me to start writing a book. So I finished the book. I started writing the 12th chapter in August. He died the day I was starting the 12th chapter. And now he's actually part of the book. Um, but the company just, you know, has gone sideways. So it was the, and, and I needed to, this development to, to come into this knowledge. Otherwise, if I had stayed with his company with a, you know, like, I think Courtney was talking about, like, how can I know whatever a paycheck, if I do something I'm drawn to, you don't know. I you mean, don't know. you have to listen to your own gut. You can't listen to somebody else. You have to listen to your own gut. And I would it would have been much harder for me to come into this knowledge had I stayed the, the, the normal, the more beaten path, as you call it, Justin. <laughs> right? Yeah, so, well, we were trained to, to the, the only thing. way that you get income is you get a job and mm -hmm. that's how things go. Mm -hmm. and, uh, until we, first of all, see that money is energy and see it from that perspective. Energy comes from anywhere. I don't need a job to receive that kind of energy. Right. Uh, we just don't get there. But you started to talk about when your awareness of your new being was kind of evolving. Um, I'll come back to this thought. So I want you to finish yours. It just told me more about the way you discussed it, Paul, I keep coming back to you because, man, every time you mention the beginnings of your journey, they, ma they match mine. I'm oh. that logical guy that needs to understand it. I was a freaking poli sci kid at the University of Minnesota. Didn't like it, left. Oh, <laughs> really? Oh, that's funny. When you mentioned quantum physics and that, yeah. that is how science and metaphysics in the first place married yeah. for me. And yeah, so me too. That's how it the started. The metaphysical for me. side of yeah. me wanted to be nourished. So yes. here we go. Now, yeah. when you begin to understand that whole thoughts become things, here yeah. is the foundation of all of it. Yeah. Quarks and quarons and, uh, you know, the waves. I got that. I couldn't get, uh, I never did hear of the movie of The Secret, but I'm glad I didn't because that would have never resonated with me when it opened. I had to hear it from quarks and quarons and, and wave theory and um, what is it? The du double slit experiment that all resonated with me. Yeah. I could not have seen the secret and said, Oh good. Now I'm going to go get a million dollars, you know, with law of attraction that would have never, I could have never done it from that perspective, but now I see it's all connected nothing is not connected everything is connected you know we so. just were never trained to look at things from that dynamic perspective mm -hmm. we were never taught any of those things you articulated one of the, one of the things that you were taught as a teacher were things that we were never taught ourselves oh yeah so. but now i look to now i see that there's so much not in the in the curricula that i took a test on there's so much not in there you know, a lot's been left out of history. Uh, so, yeah. It makes me wonder how much of that is ignorance from the people that taught us. And I get that because they were conditioned by those that conditioned them. And I wonder how much of it's been suppressed that, you know, people knew what it was and didn't want us to know. Anything. Yeah. One thing I do know that was suppressed, and this is part of the book that I wrote, because it's very logical and um it's very, it's, it's a very logical path as to how we, where we started and how we got here. It's that logical path, not probably for the advanced spiritually. It would be for the ones that are maybe just on the, starting the journey. Yes. Uh, but it is a very logical path, but there was a, a huge movement to the occult and spiritualism in the, um, early 1800s, late 1800s, and early 1900s, where there was 10 million people that had moved into spiritualism, which is women uh, that were becoming mediums, 
um, that they were doing seances and various types of mediumship demonstrations in homes of the middle class and the upper middle class people, including Mary Lincoln, um, the president's wife. She had mediumship demonstrations and seances in the White House, right? Because it was that much of a big movement. Andrew Carnegie himself, uh, his father and his uncle were followers. They left the traditional Christian church and they were follows, followers of Emmanuel Swedenborg. And Emmanuel Swedenborg has, he, at the age of 53, he was very successful politician and scientist at age 53, uh, which is about when it started for me too, he became, he started getting mediumship abilities where people from the spirit world were talking to him and ETs from other planets were speaking to him. This was from the late 1700s, early 1800s. This is when he was in Sweden, you know, and he wrote books on it at first, you know, kind of anonymous, but then Swedenborg societies opened up and here they are at all the Ivy League colleges and Andrew Carnegie was one of the biggest followers. And it's all the stuff that's in the unity churches. It's all the stuff we're talking about. It's the Kybalion, it's hermetic law, it's, but it's, it's mediumship. And here, um, Andrew Carnegie, who gave up all of his fortune based on his philosophy, after he made the money, he gave it all up. It's all based on this occult teachings. All of that has been wiped out of the history books. Now, I had to teach Christianity, Islam, Judaism, Buddhism, Hinduism. That's all in history books in public schools, not the spiritualist movement. Mm -mm. Wiped out. You know, yeah. it's interesting that you bring that up because recently I want to do a deep dive on um, somehow the Book of Mormon came into my awareness okay and i'm just okay yeah that's kind of mystical but stuff but it wasn't i don't know about it but it wasn't it wasn't necessarily as a from a religious aspect okay that's not what i'm talking about i'm it, it was it was more of a historical narration of what actually happened here in the uh, United States and Central America, or the, uh, yeah, Central America, right? And the the they talked about these beings coming to uh, um, the, the the bringing about teachings, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, the re the reason the reason I'm 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 saying this only is because I learned recently learned that. Um, the, the the gentleman that that wrote or or translated described the 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 um, the information that was given to him was a man named Joseph Smith. You know, he's he's known for writing the Book of Mormon. Yeah. Anyhow, he was a seer. He used to use oh. divination, like look into a hat with glasses, right? And he was receiving downloads from. Uh, uh, from a higher source. And in this case, it was like an angel Moreau and I, he never wrote the tablets. They, he just, they were, he, he was guided to, to dig up where they were buried. And there were these like golden tablets. Right. And then, then he had connected with that higher source to then start transcribing what was written on the tablets. Right. Somehow, somehow in uh, there was a religion created. Right. Based upon that. But that wasn't that wasn't the, the, the it was I look at it as kind of history because there's a lot of Native Americans that talk about the same thing. They talk. And, and if you start if you start re uh, research, if one does the research on the the Mayans, right, the Mayan codices, um, they talk about the same thing. The Aztec talks about the same thing. So, which linked because I I did all these re, they did did so much research, which led it that led me to, um, kind of a baseline understanding of the individuals they describe as jump starting civilization, mm -hmm. and 
and then maybe a mistranslation of the term gods. Maybe they weren't gods, right? They were helpers that came from the sky, right? Mm -hmm. So, 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 um, it, I jumped into, you know, I, I went down the hole of, you know, Quetzalcoatl, right? Very prominent figure in the Aztec Mayan, you know, um, creation story. Well, there's a link between that particular character and Thoth. That's right. That's and exactly Enoch. right. And Enoch. It, it, it's just, it, it, when I started di diving deeper and I just like, holy smokes. Um, it. Oh, uh, yeah. This. Yes. It's also, I just watched um, a little documentary on Freemasonry. In in the what is it the the higher ranks of Freemasonry? Guess who's there? Toth. Mm -hmm. There too. There are people that want to twist that in a negative way. Oh people who want to play in that kind of 3D realm. We all know, and what Toth resonates with me, this is the God of wisdom. And he gave us the ability to communicate. And the wisdom that he's hanging on to, he's sharing with us bits and pieces. He's doing it now. Do you think there was coincidence, again, for us to have stumbled over the golden tie allotments right now that was channeled by him 30 years ago? No, right. everything is in divine timing. And he put it in the hands of the people that he knew would do something with it. So yeah. as uncomfortable as it makes us all, <laughs> and yes, it is, it still does. I think Paula said it. I'd just love to just share this with my own and call it a day. That is not why we came back. We did come back to help everyone else. That we're just that deep an empath that we can't stand by and watch somebody who we could help get it and do nothing. That's not how we were built. So you know, it, I don't see that it's going to be uncomfortable for a little while longer because when we start to talk about this more out loud, here's where scrutiny is going to start to come. That's why I tried to contain it to our Facebook group first before it gets outside that. So we're all you know, geared up as the best that we can before we start to face scrutiny. Well, and, and, you know, one, and so it has been around forever, guiding with the wisdom. And of course, yes. in the divine timing, as you say, but, you know, and like you said, with the, now, I don't know a lot about the Mormon religion, but I've known uh, people that are Mormon, and I know they live by a code of ethics. Would you like kind of agree with that? Like they have a certain, um, you know, a code of ethics that they live by. And then also the Mayans live by a code of ethics. Is that correct? I, I can't remember, but I would, I would say that, you know, any, most re, like anybody that finds a At the advanced version of the Mayans, I'm sure. The yeah. reason I say is because in, uh, in, in my study of American politics, when you look at, you know, there's things that the government gives in terms of its right, the rights, right? Like the, the, the right to pursuit of happiness, et cetera. But on the other side of it, and this is what we don't talk about as much, for the government to be in a harmony with how it behaves, it requires a populace that also lives by a virtue so that the two work together in harmony, right? Correct. So the ver so in my book, I list the virtues that humanity would have to live by so that the United States could also provide what they said that they're going to do. Otherwise, they got to jump in and act outside of the prom, you know, harshly. Right. Because the people aren't in harmony and the virtues that are that, that are listed that people that come to this country have to study and take a test on. And we just sort of take for granted those oh, yeah. virtues uh, are all the virtues that I read in Diane Robbins book. I know, and I even alluded to the fact that they have at the time of the founding fathers of writing this, that they were influencing that. 
uh, those virtues. Like they were influencing our, us at that pivotal time for the United States uh, to kind of guide people as to how to live in harmony, right? And so uh, that's part of the founding, our foundation as a country, which would be different than other countries where it's like, well, you were, you know, you behave according to the divine will of a king or a queen. And then that changes as the king mm -hmm. and queen come and go, right? Uh, this would be the stabilizing force. And, and all of it is just, just basic, you reap what you sow. That's what our vir virtues are. You reap what you sow. Uh, you treat your neighbor the way you'd want to be treated. I mean, it's real basic stuff. But if you follow that, like your life is, you know, if everybody were to follow that, you know, <laughs> life is, life is, um, it's easy, but it's not, it's not, it's not, what is it? It's simple. It's not easy. You're correct. Right. Correct. Well, yeah. and, and, and it, uh, boy, there's so much to unpack with what you just said. Because, but, but it's all about harmony, yeah. you know, finding yeah. your life, finding one's life purpose, because the, the, after a while, and, and I'm just speaking out of my own personal experience, after a while, if you're out of alignment, the universe will, will show you that you're out of alignment in, in, in more ways than one. You know, you, you won't have a choice. It just, you know, uh, in my case, it did. It cleared my slate and says, OK, you got to you got to focus because what you're doing isn't, you know, hasn't been beneficial. Right. It hasn't been beneficial or hasn't been in tune with with uh, uh, like my life path. And and I, I could say that, too, as a um, on a societal level that that, you know, the founding fathers uh of of america a lot of the tenets and a lot of the things that were written were taken well they, they, they were adopt they adopted a lot of the teachings of the native american yeah uh, yeah of the native american tribal that's tribal. what i'm saying that's why i feel like toth has been um inspiring us a long time and and what they they wouldn't say that but i see it I see yes. it myself. I put the connection together, but they say it's from John Locke and the Enlightenment. No. And then it's the Freemasons that were sort of making sure that the Enlightenment message could be heard in secret societies so they wouldn't get burned at the stake, you know. And then, you yeah. know, but really it's it's all the same thing. And that's why I know this Toth message mm -hmm. is universal. It's timeless. Mm -hmm. It's pure. Right. It's beautiful. It comes at times when it's going to be received the best. When is that? When people are in crisis, if things are just sort of, you know, whatever, people don't want to change, even if their life isn't going that great, they don't change unless there's a big crisis that invites them to change. <laughs> you know? Yeah. There's some, some shift that takes place and then your perspective is altered. Now, if you're paying attention to that part of you, and we don't because we ignored the metaphysical side of ourselves for way too long, way too long. Oh, that's Why exactly. now is it being triggered? I don't know what it is, but I'm thankful that it's happening because yeah. again, it's all a cycle. Earth is about to move into a new vibration. And in order for the rest of us sentient creatures on her, we have to vibrate at the same level. So we have all of this help coming to our assistance. There is, man, things that are changing us at a, a, an energetic level. That's why I hope people really embrace that side of themselves and start to feel because that's the part that you're going to be able to physically discern now. When we talk about vibrations, you know when it's up and you know when it's down. And we're telling you, keep it up because Earth is about to be up. And we will no longer be able to count on. It's just we we take for granted that we vibrate at the same level as the environment around us. Well, very soon the vibration is going to rise, and if you, well, being doesn't vibrate with it, 
Well, you know, your this carbon body is just going to entropy away with everything else that doesn't match the vibration that just rose. But your soul now hits your decision. Do you wish to ascend? Because new earth is on our way. It's oh. not like we can stop that process and you can't fake your alignment and your vibration. You can't fake that. That day is coming soon. And that's really what I'm here to help people understand. Some of them will hear me. Some of them won't. I this is as public as I'm ever going to go with it until maybe it's a little more uniformly. And someone asks me, you know, speak your mind on this topic. Well, then I'll be glad to tell you. Earth shift is coming soon, guys. I measured in years. And so you can either take my information and do what you wish with it. I know how I came to these conclusions and they were all by reason. I wasn't really, I didn't, wasn't given this level of intellect and my ability to communicate the way that I have right now without having some downloads that came my way to assist me in the process. So when I sound like I speak beyond my capacity, you can count on, I definitely am. Something is talking through me, just letting my ego get out of the way so that you can hear truth that is coming about a cosmic situation that is unavoidable. Yeah. I couldn't agree more. And again, like I said, I'm evidential. I'm like you, I need evidence. So you know how I know that it's coming soon from an evidential perspective. Remember when I said in 2012, it said, this voice said, Paula, if you keep doing what you're doing, you're not going to get to that pot of gold at the end of the rainbow. Well, I didn't know what that meant. Cause I've never been monetarily oriented so it wasn't like money. I knew it wasn't money, but it meant pot of gold of understanding what's going on and how to be of service to truly, you know, make the, like I wanted to make it happen better under politics, but th they knew they knew that that wasn't possible. It's not through politics that I could make help make the changes that I wanted to make. That wasn't the path. I even uh, worked on the Obama campaign and was invited to his inauguration. After he was in four years, I said, "Forget him. He, he's he's not helping." You know, no, right. obviously he, he didn't have the power to. I didn't know that at the time. But you know what? It said pot of gold at the end of the rainbow. And I just put the two and two together maybe two months ago. It meant, you know, Shambhala is called Rainbow City. It meant the pot of uh, end of the rainbow. It meant Shambhala. And I had not even heard of Shambhala till, till a year and a half ago. When it was also a message in my head, Paula, look up Shambhala. I'm like, Shambhala? I don't know what that is. And then I saw the Three Dog Night song. I'm like, what? <laughs> <laughs> then I saw more you know I said oh yeah I remember that song what's that got to do with me but then I realized now the fact that it said back in 2012 pot of gold at the end of the rainbow it meant where you want to end up is in Shambhala and it's a real place and the fact that that just came to me as a message now means that this is really happening now Shift it's being brought happening. into your awareness so that that can be brought into physicality because that's how it happens. Yeah. And because I need evidence, I'm an evidence type person. So finally, after 10 years, I put the two and two together, what pot of gold at end of rainbow means. And that means our completion, isn't it? Our, yes, this is. was our yes. this was our final goal was to make it to Shambhala or I, I guess yeah. Talos, which is we already determined one and the same. It's all inner earth. Yeah, it's, it's all, all inner earth. a higher dimensional realm. It's it's there. It's tangible for those of us whose awareness is acute enough to feel those things around us. Really? That blew my mind two months ago. I said, I am, I made it to the end of the rainbow. Wow. Welcome. <laughs> yeah. Well, maybe we'll stop there for today because it's just about to kick into 1230 and well, we could go on again. Um, Justin, hang on to that can of worms that you talked about and we'll pick up there next time. Because okay. uh, it's, I love how this is unpacking 
And it's just coming in a way that for people that are waking up and kind of waiting to hear from somebody else that is too, that's why I love when you two communicate and I kind of mindfully just sit back and let you tell your stories. Um, Cause every time you do, I come away with stuff for me again too. So thank you both Justin and Paula. There were things that were meant for me to get out of this today. And I feel better than I did earlier today with things I just need to assimilate. Tribe will do that for you. Just listen to them and you'll know where your heart belongs. And it's not in getting yourself out of the mire of some 3D crap that you should stop paying attention to. You know what you're here to do. Focus on that. Focus on what we need to do to finish the golden tie of stuff over the next couple of days so that it's presentable to anybody that wants to find it now. And then in the meantime, we get ready with understanding it better. But as Paul pointed out, I've read through it four times already. And while I'm copying, pasting, I'm still trying to digest it all because it's a lot of information. But Justin, when you said, I, I keep going back to my AI illustration program to see, I look for these phrases. Then when I see it, I want to illustrate this. So I have one for you, Justin, that is the Chariot of the Sun's Merkaba group. Yes. Awesome. That thing that you saw going into the sun, I think I have what you have. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. I look all right. forward. Well, have a good Sunday and I'll see you all soon. Thanks for coming today. And for the rest of you to listen to this, you know where to find us next week. Uh, I did not purposely plan these out past um, Christmas. I, when I started these in August, I decided I'll go through the end of the year and then we'll reevaluate. And I didn't do anything over the Christmas holidays. So I think next week is the last two that I have planned. Then if you guys have some feedback, I would love to hear that on maybe better times and days to do these live things doesn't mean that there still isn't on every day of the week i'm with somebody now and i intend to record all these so that they get to hear or others get to hear the ability for these people to share their stories they're all coming together in the same way and it's getting faster and faster um anyway which is so exciting and awesome thank you lol it is. Thank you, Thank so you much. guys. Okay, okay. Have Thank a good you for putting day. this group together. Thank you so much, Justin, for sharing. I've learned a lot. Thank you. Have a good day.